Games. We're going to expand the reach of games to Android TV all over the world. These games are in the Android Play Store. You click, you download it, you start playing. And it is beautiful. Without a special box, it is now just an app. This app is the Shield Store and a bunch of games in it. I think this is really going to expand the reach of games. And so you now have a revolutionary television device, the world's most advanced smart TV, voice search capabilities, 4K, 30 bits per pixel, incredibly snappy, incredibly fast, elegantly sitting there on your desk on your, in your living room, and a store full of some amazing, amazing games. There will be 50 at the time of launch. There will be 50 at the time of launch. Most game platforms will be lucky to have a few at the time of launch. We'll have over 50 in the store at the time of launch. All that, the revolutionary television experience, the world's most advanced Android TV, the first 4K Android TV device, and TX1 powered game platform, all for an incredible value of $199. And, and instead of bundling a remote control, we decided to bundle the game controller. And the reason, the reason for that is because we would like you to have the entire experience of the Shield console right from the first day you get it. $199, incredible value. You pull it out of the box, you plug it in, you Boot, Android TV comes up, and a world of entertainment inside. You type in your Gmail address. If you happen to be an Android user like us, all of a sudden, your music, your movies, and if you like, your photos, all kinds of amazing things show up instantly. Really, really easy to use, incredible amounts of value, $199. I don't even know how they did it. So that was our second announcement, game console. Let me talk about the third announcement. We've been working on this for some time. It's an incredibly difficult problem. We've been building a supercomputer, as it turns out. And our hope, our vision was this. We asked ourselves, wouldn't it be amazing if we could just stream video games from the cloud? The way that people stream Netflix from the cloud, the way we stream music, with Spotify. We could expand the reach of gaming in a way that no platform in the history of mankind could. Sure, it was an incredibly difficult challenge. And for the last several months, we've been testing the platform, we've been testing the platform in public. People have been using it on the Shield tablets. It's now set up all over the world, from Taiwan to Europe, all over the United States. We partner with Amazon. It is running in all their data centers. And we've been testing it and testing it and testing it. And I can tell you today, I'm so pleased to announce that after all of this testing, we've come to the conclusion that we have in our hands the world's first game streaming service, the NVIDIA Grid. We are going to make it an official service. But there's more. It's a full-out service, and I'll show you the service in just a second. It's a full-out service. But more than the fact that it's just 
now click and play, which is just incredibly delightful. Instead of downloading 50, 60, 70, and in time, 200 gigabytes of games, hours and hours of digital download, because we want bigger and bigger games and richer and richer experiences, you could click and start playing the game in less than a minute. Click and play in less than a minute. Well, not only could you um, enjoy the game in 720p30, we've, we're going to offer a premium service that delivers the experience at 1080p 60 frames per second. Unbelievable. So this dream has taken us several years, and let me tell you why. Well, it turns out, in order to, once we started tackling the problem, and we said, wouldn't it be great if we could just stream games from the cloud, we move the computer to the data. We keep the data in the cloud, we move the computer to the data, we interact with that computer, that computer is hundreds of miles away, and we'll mash our buttons, and magically, the graphics change on your television, and it's as if the game console it's as if the computer is right here in the room with you. Well, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. And so we dug into it and we started working on the problem. As it turns out, everything's a problem. <laughs> as it turns out, everything's a problem. And so over the course of several years, we divided the problem into work for almost every single organization in our company. Every single organization in our, in our company started working on this problem. They all worked on it in the course of due time. Everything from architecting the GPU so that it could be the most energy efficient GPU in a data center because we're gonna be streaming games to millions of people, to hundreds of millions of people, we hope billions of people. And so over time, the number of game sessions we're gonna have in the cloud is gonna grow pretty dramatically. Energy efficiency is job one. We have to be able to render and code, grab that frame buffer and code it and stream it so quickly because we have just no time to waste. We are counting every single clock tick, every single millisecond from the moment that we touch the button all the way out to the internet, all the way into a data center, all the way through the graphics engine, all the, the game engine, the rendering engine, all the way back. Every single clock tick was measured, accounted for, and we just meticulously grinded each and every one of those things over the course of multiple years. Brand new GPU. Brand new SOC, the Tegra X1, so that it could decode and render incredibly fast. Even the game controller was made Wi-Fi direct so that we can save a few milliseconds there. The game engine, the middleware had to be re-engineered to be the lowest latency possible. We put these GPU supercomputers all over the world, embedded it within the Amazon AWS service so that we can serve customers everywhere in the world. And of course, we needed large scale. We came to the conclusion that this is a problem that needed to be solved end to end. Chips on both ends, software on both ends, system software on both ends, virtualization technology to be invented, streaming technology to be invented, solving it end to end. And that if we didn't do it, if we, we didn't undertook this journey, and we, because we have all the pieces, that it simply would not get done. And we worked on it year in and year out, year in and year out, and I'm just incredibly delighted that the team, after beta and testing all over the world now for several months, we're just so happy that we believe now this can be a real service. Now the amazing thing is this, if you have a good internet connection, and I have a fairly good one, it's not a great one, it's a fairly good one, I can get, I can get from the point that I click for the electricity, the signal to go down to a data center hundreds of miles away in Oregon for it to come back with a rendered image with no buffering at all, it happens in 150 milliseconds or so. That is approximately half the time that we use as humans in a blink. 
A typical blink is 300 to 400 milliseconds. So basically, half the blink of an eye. Half the blink of an eye. Button press, the pixels show up 150 milliseconds. Incredibly, incredibly low latency. So I want to thank all of the NVIDIA engineers. The, the number of engineers that have touched, worked on this over the years is countless. And everybody in their little, little skunk works continued to work on this until one day we were able to put it together on an end-to-end -end experience and bring gaming, extremely high-quality gaming, to the world. I want to thank all of you guys. Thank you very much.